there guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine video. Today we're going to be having a look through the Electric Dreams sample which has recently been released by Epic Games. Now if you remember the tech demo for Unreal Engine 5.2, that is what this level is. So we can have a look at the procedural content generation tools and the amazing environments they have created for this tech demo. So let's just get in and have a look straight away. As you can see, I'm in the level here. We have some different controls and you can look around and this looks absolutely fantastic. This looks beautiful. It looks like a photorealistic scene, which we have here. And I just want to show one thing before I go anywhere else. If I hide the post process, you can see what difference this makes. So this just really shows how much of a difference post process can make in the creation of your environments to make it look as beautiful as you want. So this is what it is without post process. And this is then with post process. So really, again, just shows how much of a difference different things can make. It isn't just focus on lighting or just focus on assets or just focus on the landscape. You have to focus on everything as a whole. So let's just get right in and let's hit play. So I think we fly around as a drone, but we can also play animations as well. So here we are, let's press F11 to go full screen and we can see that we have got a drone now. So if I to go W, we can go forward, back, left, right and ascend. And we can also increase and decrease the speed as well but this just gives us some nice movement and cinematic movement going through this world and this environment now as you can hear it is actually quite laggy so the audio keeps cutting in and out so i might end up removing that in post because that is actually very bad and quite annoying and you can also see that in general the whole scene is lagging quite a bit now reason for that is this map is very intensive and I don't believe I have enough RAM for the recommended specs. Everything else I do have the recommended specs for, I have above but not the RAM. That is something I know I need to upgrade my PC and I am looking into doing that very very soon. But with all that said and out of the way, this does look great. Again you can see all these different things we have in this environment. So we have all the different areas, the caves, the lighting, you can hear some water although again I might have cut that out. And again, you might recognize this from the tech demo. So this is one of the main areas they were showcasing as this here will be one of the procedural content generation tools as well. So I believe if I, if I were to press shift C, we're gonna play an animation. Here it is. So we can now see an animation of some of the different areas here. So we're going in all the way from the back, zooming in again, a little bit framey. So I might have a look at some of the other maps as well. And this is what we're getting here. But I really do love how Epic Games always release these samples for us to see. They did the same with the boy in a kite years ago for Mario Legend 4. They did the same with the Matrix Awakened City. And they're doing the same with this one now. It's really great for them to be able to do that. And now it's that animation that we just saw there. Looked absolutely fantastic. So let me get out of play mode and let's have a look back through the editor once again. So what I want to do is I want to have a look at Nanite. So if we go to Lit up at the top here. And then we go down to Nanite Visualization. And I'm just going to go to triangles. I want to see what this looks like here. So you can see that, wow, there is actually a lot of nanite here. It actually just looks like static on my screen. That's how much it is broken up. So we can go all the way in and see all these different little pebbles and stuff that have been broken up into these triangles. So if I go over to overview now, we should be able to see that this is what it actually is. So we have this floor here broken up into all these different triangles and all these different separate pieces for nanite to be able to use it. And this is just really showing how powerful Nanite is. So you can see how many different triangles and polys we have in this scene. It will be millions, if not trillions. And yet it is still running perfectly fine. Obviously for me, it's a little bit laggy just because I don't have RAM. But again, this also isn't really an environment you typically have in a game. Although it is now technically possible if you have the right specs. But you can see it does just look a lot like static. That's how much we have here. And you can see with Unreal Engine 5.2 as well, we've now got it on foliage as well, not just static meshes. So let's also have a look into Lumen view as well. So we've got an overview for Lumen. You can see all the difference this is making here. So you can see the Lumen scene, reflection, and surface cache, and then the actual scene at the bottom here as well. And let's just now go back to the lit view like so. So just the normal game mode we have here, or the game view, I should say, sorry. And if I just get up, you can really see the scale of this map, which again, they said the majority of this was created using the procedural generation tools they've created. If I remember correctly, I believe it was four by four kilometers was hand created, 
the rest was all procedural generated and i might be wrong i can't exactly remember so sorry if it is but again the majority of it was made using the tools some sections were handmade and they've used that handmade section to then create the rest of them like you can see here so let's press g to go out of game view so we can see all the different icons again and we'll go down and see if we can mess around with some other things here so this is the pcg area here which is the procedural content generation area so all of this here is created using the procedural content generation tools which is what i said when i first came in here so if you were to click this let's press f11 again you can see that this is the demo ground and you have all these different decals here as well for material instance leakage 8k so all of this is 8k texture as well so if i were to move this around you're going to get different effects you can see what this is doing it's just adding that a little bit to it and we have the pcg demo forest bp as well where you can change all these so if i were to go all the way back up again you can see i'm going to change some of the forest in using the procedural generation content tools so let's go all the way out here let's change the global trees density from 0.8 to 1.8 and see what that does so you can see all the trees spawning in now it's still doing the tasks here so preparing pcg tasks and we now have more trees if i set this to 10 i might regret this for my system but let's have a look at what that does it maxes out at five and if we just wait a second we should see the density will increase any second now or maybe it's not maybe i'm looking in the wrong area if i press f it's going to go down here so that focuses on where it is so if i were to just look in this general area here we should see what it's doing so we have five if i set it back to 0.8 you can see the changes it's making so it's removing some trees but it doesn't seem to be making a huge difference if we just set the scale to 2 instead of 0.75 you can see what's happening here so you can again see that change the scale of all of these trees and then we can do the density of the rocks as well so if we set the scale of the trees to zero we should get rid of them there we go and now we can see the rocks so we have a density of one let's set that to five and we can see that we will now get more rocks or the maximum is one so we set that to 0.2 we then get even less so that to 0.8 you get that many and again this is just really showing how easy it is to have the procedural generation of this forest environment and just really change it for as much as you want so let's set the trees back to 0.75 let's set the density to let's say two so we get a little bit more trees in there that looks a bit better for me density i'll keep as one global large cliffs density is zero so if we set that to one where are these cliffs going to be there you are so you can see we now have these kind of outcrops here and the seed is zero let's set that to six and that will then change where they are so that's a nice thing you have with this is you have a seed and a seed in random generation essentially means that seed number will always be the same so if i set it to zero the rocks will always appear there if i set it to one they will always appear there and so on and so forth so if i go back to six you'll remember where they were they were there if i go back to one they're back to here that's essentially just what that is in a very short way of saying it i'm going to set it back to zero as i liked that one like so and you have the scale modifier as well so if i set that to two they're going to be even bigger than they are currently and then we have two modifiers there so if we bring this out you can see we have the modifier and the modifier ratio so if i set the ratio to 0.2 we'll see what the change is now so we have some that are bigger some that are smaller so i'm guessing this is just the maximum two is maximum so if we set that to one there will be more of a bigger scale like so and we can increase the area as well so we set this to 10 it maxed out at five and if i zoom out a little bit further we can see what difference this is actually making so we put it to zero you can see we have a kind of an area around the rocks which is being cleared using this tool here and we also have dead trees if i set that to five we can get more dead trees in here don't know why i really want that but you have a few which is why i believe it's set at 0.2 and you can see these more down here so i increase that to one we get more set to zero we get less so we set it back to 0.2 and we have the current settings for the pcg as well so we have the hero tree density the point extents so we have all of these changes here which i'm not going to go fully into but i've gone over the basics which you can really see changing here and again it just makes it incredibly quick and easy to make large landscape areas as you can see here and now some people might be worried that this is just me taking level designers jobs and i don't think it will because it will be level designers that are using this tool it's just making their lives easier and as they said in the tech demo, there was still an area of this map designed by level designers, which programmers then created these tools using what the level designers made. So you still need to make some stuff 
for these tools to work and that's really how ai and procedural generation is going to work is it's not going to replace people it's just going to be working with people so people still need to create these tools and teach these tools all of that stuff that is my view at least on it i know a lot of people have different views i think that we just need to change how we work with ai and with these tools so we can then make our own lives easier we're not replacing jobs we're just changing them i can go back in if i press g once again we can make this look a bit better so we can go into game view and we can see the changes that we have made using this tool so you can see it is a lot denser and the trees are a little bit bigger i think i made them or i might have reset it back but you can see it's definitely a lot denser in here now and just looks a little bit different and i think it looks a little bit nicer and this is of course that new material they've created and it released in Unmission 5.2 as well but i'm not going to be going over that too much today as i'm only going over the new procedural generation tools and this environment demo itself so what i'm going to do is just one final thing as i'm just going to go all the way up and then enable nanite once again as i just want to see what it looks like for the whole map as i'm sure it is going to look very very strange and just very staticky as there's going to be absolutely millions and millions and millions of nanite triangles in the scene as we can see here and i really like this view showing you what it is so you can see all of these little rocks have tiny triangles and some of the cliffs are a lot bigger as so they don't need to be as detailed so again let's go back into just the overview and then we can see what it is we're actually looking at so you can see that these rocks here are kind of bigger than everywhere else so some of the rocks as well or oh, i've clicked on something let's just get rid of that and if we've got instances you can see everything in here as well so let's make that one a little bit bigger go on instances you can see that we have all of the different individual well, instances we'll have all the different meshes that are then broken up even further using the triangles view that we saw there as well so this is now just a multicolored environment but it just really is showing how powerful nanite is but i think that will probably be it for this video where i'm just showcasing and exploring very briefly and very quickly the new electric dreams environment sample in unreal engine 5.2 where i've also covered some of the procedural content generation tools which i'm very excited for and to use and to see how they progress further so thanks so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did please do make sure to like and subscribe down below and stay tuned for further content using these tools and let me know in the comments down below what else you'd like to see on my channel as well so again thanks so much for watching this video and i'll see you all in the next one